Hello everyone. So, today's topic is thermophysiological comfort of functional clothing. So, functional clothing are a particular segment of clothing where specific functions are required are expected from a clothing ensembles like firefighter clothing or clothing for extreme cold these are the functional clothing and here we will discuss the nature of functional clothing various components of functional clothing their thermophysiological comfort aspects of functional clothing and the how to achieve the how to achieve the comfort characteristics of functional clothing and we will discuss the heat and mass transmission both so if we see the functional clothing they are basically of two different layers are there two basic layers are required okay so first is that tight fit inner garment it must be there for any functional clothing so one tight fit inner garment should be there and one loose fit outer garment should be there we can have any other layers but this two separate clothings will be there so if we want to incorporate some more attributes so we can play with the loose fit outer garment we can add different layers but these two layers must be there so one tight fit garment which is separate another is loose fit outer garment and when a person walks or he is active so the wind penetrates through the loose fit garment that means there will be one air layer air ventilation between the tight fit and loose fit garment so it's not the microclimate microclimate is between the skin and the first layer here we are not talking about the microclimate here it's a layer between tight fit and loose fit garment so if there are wind blowing so the warm air or high humidity will get replaced with the cold air or low humidity from environment will replace this warm and moist air so ultimately this ventilation will help in maintaining the temperature and humidity of microclimate and also the body so body will become comfortable so this ventilation in functional garment is extremely important so if we see this diagram here in the left side it's a human body okay and the heat and moisture from human body comes through the skin and just after the skin the next layer is the tight fit garment and after that there will be loose fit garment and then the outside of the loose loose fit garment there is a air layer steel air layer okay it's called surface air layer which also incorporate the insulation in between the 
tight fit and loose fit garment there is a air channel air gap is there. In case of wind blowing or the person is walking the wind will blow through this air gap. So, it will create ventilation. So, for any functional garment if we can create this ventilation. So, we can create the thermophysiological comfort in addition to the fabric characteristics. So, the heat and mass transfer through fabrics are of two stages. The first stage is normal heat and mass transmission which we have already discussed in detail. So, the dry heat transmission is basically through conduction, convection and radiation and moisture evaporation is through diffusion and convection. This we have discussed in detail. The second stage here it is created between tight fit and loose fit garment just to have air ventilation. So, when the person is moving or wind is blowing the wind will penetrate through this opening and the ventilation will create and that created ventilation will control the heat and moisture condition of microclimate also. So, if you see this schematic diagram here the H T is the heat flow through tight garment just from the skin the total heat flow H T through the tight garment and then the heat will flow through the loose garment. And here we are talking about the stage 1 where ventilation effect is neglected. The whatever heat is coming out from the tight fit garment will actually transfer through the loose fit garment and then from loose fit garment the heat will come out in the form of dry heat which is H D i. So, heat flow without mass transmission that is the dry heat transmission and then heat flow with mass transmission that is H M E V it is a mass transmission. So, dry heat transmission is by conduction convection and radiation and mass transmission through moisture evaporation that is H M E V it is a moisture evaporation and it is basically through air ventilation and wind penetration it actually it enhance this one, but basically this total phenomena here it is a stage 1 phenomena. And if we see the relationship here H T equal to H I G that means, the heat which is flowing out from the tight fit garment equals to the heat flowing out through the loose fit garment and then it is a summation of dry heat and uh, through mass transmission and dry heat through conduction, convection and radiation and through mass transmission. Next is that the total heat that is total dry heat transmitted through the tight fit garment H D i total dry heat okay, must transmit through the loose, loose fit garment if we talk about the stage 1 and the outer surface of the clothing. So, H D i 
equal to H D O and H D O S, where H D O is the dry heat transmission through the outer garment and H D O S is the dry heat transmission through the surface air surface beyond the loose fit garment outer garment. Okay. So, this 3 will be equal in case of there is no ventilation. So, after passing through the tight fit garment the total evaporative heat generated by sweat evaporation is divided into two components. Okay. So, one is this sweat evaporation it is due to stage 1. So, evaporative heat loss through the outer garment the without any ventilation and if you talk about the ventilation that is S stage 2 evaporative heat loss directly into the environment by air ventilation. So, when wind is blowing so H M E V is again subdivided into the stage 1 and stage 2. So, during moisture evaporation between two layers of clothing the things which are happening here fibers absorb moisture. So, first fibers absorb moisture then due to the heat of absorption the heat or temperature it releases heat. So, temperature increases. So, the faster the absorption capacity or faster the vapor pressure generated. So, then it will absorb at faster rate. So, the release of heat will be more quicker and the more discomfort sensation will be there. So, it is directly related with the vapor pressure built up. Now, this is the diagram which shows the different layers and their relationship. So, if you see this blue color it is a skin human skin and after that it is a next layer is the tight fit layer and between tight fit and loose fit layer there is a air channel okay, which is actually which helps in ventilation and after the loose fit there is another layer which is the surface air layer blue coloring. So, if you see the actual the resistance if we compare with the electrical resistance this tight fit and loose tight fit loose fit and outer layer outer air layer they are in series, but when the wind blows there will be a reduction in the that is enhancement in heat transmission. So, it will go in parallel session. So, if you see the this is the inner garment outer garment and outer air layer and it is in parallel with the opening. So, this is the total resistance of the system. So, if we know the resistance of inner layer resistance of outer layer resistance of outer garment resistance of opening. So, we can calculate the total resistance of the system by this analogous resistance ne network. The temperature of air gap between two layers this increases when vapor transmission take place that means, and the increase in temperature is almost proportional to the heat of absorption. So, that is the water vapor as the fiber absorbs water vapor due to heat of absorption the temperature between the, the layers the air gap between the, the layers it increases okay. this is due to water vapor absorption. The dynamic thermal response of different types of clothing ensemble is predominantly governed by the moisture sorption and desorption in hygroscopic fabrics. That means, as the 
fabric absorb moisture, it will release heat and during the desorption, it will take away the heat. So, depending on the condition, whether it is absorbing moisture or whether the fabric is releasing moisture, it controls the temperature of the air gap and the thermal parameters that describe the dynamic response of fabric due to the change of physiological and environmental conditions are more important than those in steady state condition. So, as we are always in dynamic condition, always the environments are in dynamic condition. So, understanding the dynamic response are extremely important. So, it is a only the steady state condition will not help, we must understand the ventilation characteristics and we can predict knowing the steady state nature. And the heat and mass transmission through layered clothing, so in that case the faster the vapor pressure built up. So, if the vapor pressure built up is fast, then the there will be stronger discomfort sensation. So, if the vapor pressure generation is slower, then fabric will take care of the vapor transmission and gradually the vapor pressure will reduce. So, the during due to normal vapor transmission will not feel that much discomfort sensation, but if the vapor pressure generation is faster than the release by the fabric, then there will be stronger discomfort sensation due to the loss of heat due to that uh, release of heat absorption. Similarly, if the higher moisture vapor pressure is there at the inner fabric surface, the microclimate result in more intense sense of discomfort. So, in case of faster vapor pressure generation or higher vapor pressure generation in both the cases will say will sense the discomfort. The surface temperature of clothing changes, so it can increase or decrease depending on whether it is absorbing moisture or it is a releasing moisture, whether it is a exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction. So, that changes during the dynamic transmission of moisture vapor within the clothing. So, in case of hygroscopic fiber, the increase in surface temperature is due to due to release of heat that is heat absorption, but if it is endothermic in nature, then there will be cooler feeling. So, that we have to select fiber accordingly, we have to select the finishing material accordingly. Now, we will discuss the functional fabrics and their physiological comfort and how to incorporate comforts in functional fabric. The functional fabrics are that the are those fabrics are basically used for some specific function okay. and this attributes are in addition to their targeted function like let us take one example of firefighter clothing. Okay. So, in addition to the firefighting performance, these are the attributes we must incorporate like visual aesthetic effect. So, visual aesthetic effect we have to incorporate, we have to incorporate tactile aesthetic effects, then mechanical failure resistance, it has to be strong enough, the fabric has to have some capability of garment making. We cannot have a fabric after coating, after doing everything very stiff, so that we cannot form a garment. So, garment making capability should be there in the fabric, it should be easy care, so that total 
characteristics which have been incorporated should remain there after during the use wearing comfortability it should be comfortable and the physiological comfortability. So, this are the characteristics plus hygiene and safety. So, all these characteristics should be there in any of the specific functional clothing. So, we have to see this effect should be there, these are the parameters, these are the attributes should be there. So, if you see the microclimate, microclimate we have already discussed the temperature of microclimate should be between 30 to 33 or 34 degrees Celsius and the humidity should be say 30 to 60. It is the most preferable microclimate. Okay. If we go beyond that, it will be gradually uncomfortable. So, our target should be to this the in this zone where the total comfort is there. So, the factors which affect the microclimate we must understand first. The factors the outer condition environmental conditions are the temperature if the temperature of the environment is increased automatically it will affect the temperature of microclimate. Relative humidity if it is high relative humidity then the release of moisture vapor will not be there properly. So, relative humidity will also increase wind condition we must understand rain, snow or sunlight. So, if we know the outer condition for any functional clothing, so we can develop our clothing, we can use particular fabric or finishes to have proper comfortable microclimate. Then we must understand the human condition that is body condition, movement condition and level of activities. So, we must know the heat generation, we must know the level of moisture generation. So, to control the microclimate and condition of clothing. So, if we know the outer condition and human condition which we normally cannot uh, can we do not have any control on this, but we can knowing all this these two first and second point we can develop clothing, then we can develop clothing of combination of wear like we can uh, develop different layers, we can uh, design different layer pace and opening of clothing, we can design clothing of different opening, so that we can control the ventilation. We can develop different fabric materials, so that it can absorb or it can transmit moisture or heat properly. So, microclimate is determined by the balance of heat and perspiration exhausted from the human skin. So, if the heat and perspiration is more, obviously the microclimate temperature and humidity will be more. So, it is controlled by the heat and perspiration exhausted by from human skin. Next is that heat and sweat or moisture transfer at microclimate place. So, how the heat or moisture is getting transmitted from the human skin to the microclimate, ventilation effect at the microclimate, if the ventilation effect is good, then even if there are more higher temperature or higher humidity that can be controlled, heat and moisture or sweat water absorption or transmission through the fabric. So, how the heat is getting transmitted or moisture is getting transmitted that will control the microclimate condition and absorption with exothermal heat or desorption or vaporization with endothermal heat by material or fabric. One is fabric, if the fabric cannot do cannot control the exothermal or endothermal heat, then we can use some coating materials also. So, if fiber 
does the thing then it is ok. Otherwise, we can add some coating material with proper exothermal or endothermal characteristics. So, sometime we use uh, the different types of coating okay, that we will discuss. The effect of outside climate including the sunlight and wind that also control the microclimate that we have discussed already and transient heat transmission between human skin and fabric that is transient heat, heat, heat of absorption or transient heat transmission that is also important. Okay. Now, this is the uh, microclimate simulator here the moisture generator is there, water tank is there with the thermostat control and the temperature is kept around 43 uh, 3 degree Celsius. So, from there there is a mimic skin some material that which which simulate the skin, the pores are there. So, from there moisture gets transmitted through that uh, this portion is the microclimate where we can control the we can measure the heat temperature and moisture and this is the fabric sample. So, using this microclimate simulator one can test the effect of different parameters on microclimate for different types of fabrics. Now, we will start discussing the different approaches to incorporate thermophysiological comfort of functional clothing. So, to make the microclimate to be closer to comfortable region that is the first approach. Okay. We have to make the microclimate towards the comfortable region around the temperature is should be around 30 to 32 degree Celsius. The functional items of thermophysiological comfort are okay. these are the functional items we must incorporate. So, if we want to incorporate warmth, so that we will see how do we incorporate warmth in the fabric that is our requirement. If our requirement is to incorporate coolness, so warmth is required in cold climate that we will see how to incorporate warmth in the functional clothing. In hot climate we may need to incorporate coolness that we will see how to incorporate coolness in the clothing. Then we may need to incorporate reduction of sweaty humidity. So, microclimate if it becomes sweaty then we feel discomfort. So, to counteract this sweaty humidity how can we improve how, how can we incorporate some characteristics which will reduce the sweaty humidity that we will see reduction in sweaty stickiness it is a different from sweaty humidity here due to increase in humidity condition the fabric stickiness increases. So, how to reduce the stickiness? Sixth one is that we may sometimes require waterproofing, but at the same time we would like to reduce the humidity in the microclimate. So, waterproof with keeping lower moisture at microclimate that how to incorporate that characteristics and reduction of sunlight heat direct sunlight heat sometime we may need to reduce like traffic police. So, where the people who are working directly under sun. So, in those fabrics how to incorporate what how to design clothing to reduce the sunlight heat. So, first is the how to impart the warmth warmness in the clothing. Okay. The main approaches are first is the to keep larger amount of steel air within fabric that is the first approach that we have already discussed. So, the technological means are there to incorporate bulkiness. If we incorporate bulkiness that means, the entrapped air will be more and it will incorporate the insulation. So, warmth will be retained. 
So, the heat it will not allow the heat to come out from the body from the microclimate. So, in the microclimate heat will be retained. So, by using fabric or yarn with bulky in nature. Next is the to make hollow yarn. So, in both the cases what we are trying we are trying to retain or retain some steel air okay, steel air within the fabric structure. The next approach is to to impart warmth is the to reduce the heat conduction through fiber within fabric. That means, heat gets conducted through the air space that we have discussed in A and also through the fiber. Through the fiber if we want to reduce the heat flow that means, we have to use the fiber with lower thermal conductivity. So, these two approaches are one is the imparting the steel air another is introduction of fiber with lower thermal conductivity. So, this curve shows that as the thickness of fabric keeping the mass per unit area constant if we increase the thickness of the material thickness of fabric the heat conductivity reduces that means, thermal resistance increases. So, that is incorporation of the bulk and next is the guidelines this is few fibers which are normally used for apparel application or garment these are the thermal conductivity in axial direction and the transverse direction. So, these are the guidelines if we want to incorporate something if we want to incorporate uh, the thermal insulation we may select like wool if we see wool has got least thermal conductivity. So, if we use wool obviously, it will give the insulation. Third approach is that to interrupt heat radiation from fiber towards outside. So, radiative heat reduction from the body we can do or to increase heat radiation from fiber towards human skin. That means, if from outside whatever heat is possible if it can penetrate through the fiber to the human body. So, that both the ways the if we see they are totally opposite requirement one is to retain heat to fiber should be able to entrap or prevent heat radiation or if there are some heat source fiber should able to should be able to take the heat. Okay. So, heat should come from fiber towards the human body. So, the second part the increase of heat radiation from fiber towards human body can be incorporated by raising the emissivity of fiber heat emissivity of the fiber. Okay. Introduction of some ingredient such as ceramic powder into the fiber. So, if you want to increase the emissivity so that to get heat radiative heat from outside. So, we can incorporate some ceramic powder into the fiber. On the other hand if we want to retain the radiative heat within the body. So, to raise the reflection of fiber. Okay. So, we can coat something reflective material okay. introduction of metallic substance. If we incorporate some metallic substance, so it will reflect back the radiative heat and retain the body heat okay. and third approach is that to enhance the interruption of radiation by making the ultra fine fiber. Okay. The microfiber if we can use it will reflect back the radiative heat. So, for radiative heat interruption or transmission we can use this uh, by these three approaches and we can keep our body warm. The fourth approach is that to reduce the air permeability whatever heat is there in our body 
it can get transmitted through moisture vapor or through air. So, if we can reduce the air permeability, if we can make the fabric compact, so higher cover factor, if we use microfiber or flat shaped fiber with high shape factor, so it will automatically reduce the air permeability and that in that case it will retain the warmth in our body and to adopt coated fabric structure. Okay. So, coated fabric we can use to reduce the air permeability. So, if we reduce the air permeability, we can indirectly retain the heat body heat, but we have to take care of the moisture vapor permeability to store heat by absorbing sunlight. So, we can incorporate some material, some agent, some surface coating. So, to introduce suitable absorbing agent into fiber or surface coated layer. So, if we can incorporate some material which absorbs sunlight, so we can increase the warmth. Next one is that to make use of exothermal heat generated by absorbing sweat moisture. So, that phenomena we can use, we can use some exothermic fiber, hygroscopic fiber, so, the to use fiber whose material has high capability of water and moisture absorption. So, high exothermic heat it can generate, so body become warm. So, it absorb moisture from environment or it can absorb moisture from the microclimate and after absorption it will release the exothermic heat and automatically the microclimate will become warm. If the fiber cannot absorb the moisture, the it is not if it is not hygroscopic, we can still make the fabric hygroscopic by coating. So, by fixing some material by coating, so with high absorbing capacity, so we can also generate some exothermic heat. So, so we can you make use of exothermal heat generation, so to uh, keep the body warmer. And also we can do to make use of exothermal heat generation by phase change material, the phase transition material we can use like to fix material we can coat material with the some micro encapsulation technique we can coat some material with exothermal heat generation with the some suitable phase changes and changing temperature phase transition temperature to the fabric. Okay. So, this phase uh, transition temperature at particular temperature the chemical the material will absorb moisture and immediately it will release it. So, through micro encapsulation we can incorporate through coating. Next is that impart coolness. So, after imparting warmth, if we want to impart coolness, so how do we impart coolness? There are different approaches. First is that to use effective transient heat transfer from human skin to fabric. That means, we have to use some material, some fiber which has got high transient heat that is Q max we have discussed. So, we can use cotton, linen or rayon these fibers are generally their high Q max value as soon as they are in touch with the body that are immediately take heat and we feel coolness. So, if we want to incorporate coolness we may go for cotton, linen or rayon or we can develop bicomponent fiber whose sheath part is composed of ethylene vinyl alcohol. So, EVA as nature as a particular characteristics of high Q max value. So, this approaches we can use. So, if you see this is the Q max value the maximum Q max value this will we can use for summer clothing 
and minimum q max value we can use for winter clothing. So, depending on the q max value we can select. So, if, if we see here it is a this one is a linen, linen has got very high q max value. So, it is a cool touch fabric and then followed by rayon we can go for rayon or cotton. This three fibers if we see they are high q max value. So, they are cool touch. So, we can make use of this characteristics. If we want warmth, if we do not want uh, coolness, we can go for wool which has got very low q max value. The next approach is that to effectively interrupt sunlight heat to the skin. So, in if we need warmth, so we have to absorb, we have to use some material which will absorb heat, we can have fabric which will absorb heat, but if we want coolness, so we have to interrupt the sunlight direct sunlight heat. So, this we can achieve by using thick fabric with high cover factor. So, if we want to interrupt sunlight heat direct sunlight heat, the idea is to we have to use a highly compact fabric direct sunlight heat will not penetrate. To use bicomponent fiber whose core part contains high concentration of TiO2, it will not allow direct sunlight to penetrate, it will reflect the direct sunlight heat. Sufficient waviness of fabric surface for low contact area. So, again when the fabric surface is directly under uh, sunlight, it will get heated. The fabric will get heated and if it is the it has got high contact area with the bo our body, then our body will feel heat. So, if we can develop a fabric with a wavy structure just to reduce the contact area, then our contact area will be less and our feeling sensation of warmth will be less. So, we will feel little bit cooler. So, one can do experiment making only the fabric from the same material only changing the waviness structure, the wavy fabric will feel cooler in nature. Some light reflective materials and can be used or some fabric can be used. So, the fabric which will reflect the light will give coolness. So, in that case if we compare the plain oven or twill with the satin, the satin fabric will give higher coolness keeping all other parameters constant and this is due to the reflective, cap reflective cap capacity of the fabric. The sunlight will get reflected better with the satin fabric. The effectively use of endothermal heat of phase change material. In case of warmth which we have seen the endothermal material we have we can use here we will use the in case of the warmth we have used the exothermal heat of phase transition. Here we will use endothermal heat of phase transition. So, you have to select material accordingly and we can incorporate by micro encapsulation method. Third requirement is that reduction of sweaty humidity. The in the microclimate, whatever sweaty humidity is there, we how can we reduce this thing? So we we reduce we release sweat, we release moisture vapor. So that first technological means is that to, to reduce sweat within the fabric, we have to incorporate the high wickability of the fabric. So, higher wickability we can incorporate or higher dryability. So, higher wickability we have seen that in case of say high active clothing, if we use a 
polyester fabric with high shape factor it will weak at higher rate the body will feel little bit drier. Moisture absorption by fiber one is that the weakability where it may or may not absorb moisture, but it will weak. But in case of moisture generation at lower level in that case the fiber we which we can use with a higher absorption capacity the use of moisture with higher absorption capacity if it is not possible we can incorporate some finishes with finishing agent with higher absorption capacity. So, then the fabric will immediately absorb moisture and our microclimate will become dry. So, it will reduce the sweaty humidity. The third approach is that the moisture trans transmission towards outside through ventilation. So, if we can incorporate ventilation by proper opening, if we can widen the openness, widen the pore, the moisture will directly get transmitted. Okay. The use of fabric having high air permeability, so five that means that will create extra ventilation. So, if we want to reduce the sweaty humidity we have to use open structure fabric with high weakability. Fourth requirement is that reduction of sweaty stickiness. Here in addition to the sweat we are talking about the stickiness that means first if we want to reduce the sweaty stickiness we have to reduce the moisture built up. The effective transmission of liquid sweat by making use of capillary phenomena. One we can do by using the capillary phenomena by using the fabric with higher shape factor, fabric with higher ultra thin fiber or some hollow fiber with porous structure have been developed. Like polyester with hollow fiber having porous structure that will absorb moisture very quickly and our body will be that microclimate will be dry immediately and it will reduce the stickiness. So, the example is this is the picture the PET fiber having high sweat absorption and transferability. So, this will immediately absorb moisture if we develop fabric from this fiber it will immediately absorb moisture from the microclimate and microclimate remains dry and sweaty stickiness will not be there. The next approach is that to reduce the sweaty stickiness is to have fabric with crepe effect. If we incorporate crepe effect that by using the untwisting torque of the fabric it will have less contact area because fibers fabric surface will be wavy and the there will be less contact area and stickiness will not be there. That means, it will reduce the clinginess that we have already discussed earlier. So, if we can incorporate a crepe effect even if there are high sweat, high moisture developed in the microclimate the fabric the it will not be stickiness it will be sweaty definitely, but stickiness will not be there. Fifth approach is that fifth requirement is that waterproof with keeping lower humidity in microclimate. So, we need waterproofing to prevent the water to come out, but at the same time we have to reduce the moisture built up to make a layer having both waterproof and moisture permeability enough to keep low humidity. So, it should prevent the water to come out the and at the same time moisture to come uh, to be released the technological means are that to coat or laminate a non porous layer having high moisture permeability. So, 
the layer should be non porous sufficient to prevent the water to come in, but it should allow the moisture to be released. And next approach is that to coat or laminate a porous layer having high water proof the layer should be porous, but it should be water proof and high moisture permeability. So, it should be what we should coat with such a material which will incorporate high water proofness and at the same time high moisture permeability. Another approach is that to make non permeable layer whose outer layer is non permeable, but inner layer coating should be such that it is highly moisture absorbent. So, that will actually take care of the absorption of humidity, absorption of moisture, but at the same time it will be waterproof. So, to coat or to laminate a high moisture absorbable layer to the inner side of non permeable layer. So, let the fabric be non permeable, if we can coat the fabric inner layer with a moisture that layer to some extent will take care of the absorption of moisture vapor and reduce the moisture build up. Now, try to see the some commercial product available the warmness to incorporate warmness the it should be absorbable to moisture it should absorb moisture and at the same time it should generate heat. So, heat of absorption is created in the speciality fiber we are not using the the commercial name here, but some speciality fibers have been developed synthetic fiber have been developed which absorbs moisture and releases the heat. So, these are the comparison the blue one is acrylic uh, this one is cotton green wool and this one is specialist uh, speciality fiber. Now, if we see with the time the fiber temperature it increases it is high always it is high it that means, with the absorption of moisture it releases heat. So, temperature remains high. So, this fiber we can use to keep our body warm. Next is the coolness. So, the fiber is it is a endothermal reaction is there endothermic perspiration it absorbs perspiration and it takes away heat. Okay. This is the it is comparison with ordinary fiber the, the ordinary fiber say normal fiber cotton and this is the speciality fiber which uses the endothermic heat okay. and here the with the in uh, absorption of moisture it temperature reduces. So, we can use to keep our body cool we can use this fiber and to maintain the microclimate as we have seen this microclimate we can maintain by proper release of humidity and reduction of sweaty stickiness for that low friction fiber has been developed that is the this is the yarn structure normal polyester cotton this is the friction stickiness index it is high normal cotton the stickiness index is higher than that, but the developed speciality yarn the stickiness index is least. Here in the at the core cotton fiber is used and at the sheath polyester filaments are used. So, if we develop yarn from that this combination we can develop a yarn with lower stickiness. So, these are some commercial products and if we see the, the first one with the temperature if here with the cotton and speciality fiber cotton the temperature is lower than the speciality fiber. So, it is keeping the warmth, 
but at the same time the humidity of the microclimate is lower. So, this particular fiber will keep the microclimate warm and dry. So, we can achieve this characteristics and last segment is that we can use reversible dimension fiber change. So, reversibility dimensional changeable fiber and its application. Okay. What is the reversibility? The polyester elastomeric fiber have been developed with high hydrophilicity. This fiber has got unique characteristics, it is a reversible characteristics. Normally, fiber after absorbing moisture get reduced, the length get reduced, but here in this fiber, if it is wet, in case of wet, it gets expanded. So, expands in wet condition and contract in dry condition. So, this fiber if we use in the yarn manufacturing or in the directly this filament if we use to manufacture fabric, we can achieve unique characteristics. So, the unique characteristics we can see here, this is the dry fabric okay. and this is oven fabric and this is knitted fabric. In case of dry fabric, the dimensions are the contracted dimension. So, in the dry fabric, these are in compact condition. So, the pores are blocked. So, in case of dry, when pores are blocked, so we do not need to transfer any moisture, but when it is wet, when we are wearing fabric or garment made of this fabric, in case of wet condition, the fiber dimension changes, fiber get extended. So, at as this fiber get extended, individual fiber the yarn dimension also get extended, whatever blocked pores are there, the inter yarn space were there, they will get opened up. And in the wet condition, in the high humidity condition, there will be opening created, which we require to release the moisture in the vapor form or in the liquid form. So, moisture gets vapor uh, transmitted through this opening. So, this is the characteristics which we can incorporate in the fabric to achieve the physiological comfort. So, this is all about the incorporation of thermophysiological comfort in functional clothing. Thank you.